Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. It is finally the day. Today is web app day where 99.99% of us are going to get on the ultimate team for the first time. That 0.01% is what we're talking about today though. That was the game changers and the people that had access to the game yesterday uh, that actually got on a day early and we learned a, a lot about of what's going on inside the game this year based off of tweets based off of screenshots and just stuff that we saw. So what I'm talking about mostly today is stuff that we saw yesterday on streams and videos of other people, Twitter posts, and even stuff that was uploaded to Footbin, Foothead, Footwiz, the full database. We're talking about that stuff in today's video because that is all information that is new. And there's some stuff that we need to talk about that pertains to the FIFA market, especially in terms of a massive market inflation with division rivals rewards being changed and we finally know how many coins we're getting like per division and that kind of changes what we might do in the early game. So I want to talk about all of that in this video. Now there's there's going to be some things that we don't talk about. I'm not going to talk about like the pro setup, the pro, pro player thing. Like there was pitch notes for that today. I want to focus on this because this is market related and that's what we care about the most. So this screenshot was tweeted out today by, I think this is a pro player or somebody I think in Spain a pro player or streamer this was his screenshot of him after he played his five division rival placement matches so he drew his first game and then won the next four ended up at a skill rating of 1670 division three and he got 89,000 coins and after we saw this today we knew that these division rivals rewards for advancing divisions they're going to be no joke so at least this this is actually in, insane for the market. This is incredible. And this kind of changes what we might want to do uh, for actually starting off our FIFA 21 Ultimate Teams as EA Play and EA Access starts tomorrow with gameplay. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about that just for right now. But the, the, the thing why this is so massive is this is going to put so many coins on the market because in years past, you used to not get actual coin just chunks of coins like that so early in foot. You didn't because the only way you got coins was from opening packs from FIFA points or doing the advanced SBCs, which there's only so many advanced SBCs you can do. And also uh, from playing games with coin rewards from just playing the game and then also like squad battle rewards, which is on Sunday. But you're going to be able to get a lot of coins like this right away if you play division rivals matches because again, to get your placement matches and to get your division set and placed in division rivals to start off the year, you have to play five division rivals matches or 30 squad battle matches. And yes, we've looked at it over and over. It is 30, even though there's a graphic on one of those pitch notes that shows out of 10, it is 30 squad battle matches or five division rival placement matches. So what I would recommend doing when you get on EA Access is build your team up a little bit. Uh, maybe on Friday, maybe it's like a, fr a Friday goal for you. Build your team up a little bit. When you feel comfortable, go into division rivals, play your five games and get those coins as fast as you can. Because I think that these coins, even if you get like division six or division five, which is probably where I'm going to be, you're probably going to end up getting somewhere around 40 to 50 K, which is huge. 40 to 50,000 coins like that on day one or day two is incredible. It's like doing another set of advanced SPCs. That's about how many coins you might make from some of these. And that's massive. All right. So I want you guys to get this done as fast as you possibly can, to be completely honest with you, because I think this is huge value. And again, it's going to inflate the market so much because we have not had stuff like this available in the game. It's going to make literally everything go up because there's going to be more coins to go around. But the stuff that's going to go up the most is going to be those meta cards, Ben Yedder, uh, Martial, Dobinson Sanchez, Rich Harlison, just all of the cards that you guys are building your starter teams with, those are the cards that are going to go up because instead of, you know, maybe somebody like Clinton Mata or uh, Todibo, that's kind of a starter player for a low budget, right? But if you get 40, 50,000 coins, you're going to be able to upgrade some of your center backs to a guy like Dobinson Sanchez, who you might not buy right away because he's he might be 10,000 coins already, or maybe a guy like Lucas Hernandez, uh, you know, or maybe you're able to afford somebody who is, you know, just a bit more higher level of an attacker like Lucas. You might be able to afford Lucas's card right off the bat instead of having to play with Adama Traore at right wing. So this is actually massive. And the meta cards that are on the game and what's meta? 
Well, technically for FIFA 21, we don't know what the meta is yet, but everybody is building teams and operating that the meta is going to be the same in FIFA 21 as it was in FIFA 20. So cards like, again, Ben Yedder and Mbappe, uh, well, that's really high price, but Ben Yedder, Martial, Gabriel Jesus, the, the small, the high agility, high balance, the play, players that were meta last year, those are going to be the cards that you see the massive price boosts on and the inflation start to take effect there because people are used to using those cards and that's what they think is that's meta in their mind so this is really really going to impact the market a lot and that's what i wanted to talk about today so the faster that you can buy those meta players the better because those cards are going to start flying right away and also this can make some of the sbc fodder rise as well because people are now maybe going to have some more coins to feel comfortable with maybe paying 4,000 coins for an SBC card, whereas maybe last year that card would have been 2K or 3K. There's just more coins on the market, and when people have coins, they like to do SBCs, and at the start of the game like this, they like to buy players and upgrade their team. So it's just gonna be more coins everywhere, and that's gonna make the market rise, and honestly, it might make it rise kind of a lot, because that's you. if you just multiply that amount of coins by how many people, now, obviously, not everybody's getting 89 or 90K. Not everybody's getting Division 3. But if you just average it out, like as a Div 6, 7, or maybe even Div 5 player, you're going to be getting somewhere between 30 and 40, 50,000 coins, it looks like, based off of this. And that means that you're, that's a lot of coins, bro. That's probably doubling or tripling the amount of coins that you currently had in your ultimate team if you're doing this on day one or day two for most people, right? Because this is just, I again, I cannot stress how massive this is. But I want to move on and talk about some other things because there's a lot of other things we learned today. But this is the first thing and the most important that that market rise that we talked about is going to happen so much faster because of the coins that were put on the market. This is number two today. This was actually tweeted just a little bit ago. Team of the week one is going to be unveiled and released Wednesday at 6 p.m. UK. Future team of the weeks will follow that same pattern so this is just a small note that there won't be the team of the week will not be released at 3 p.m uk like it always used to be there won't be that three hour window of time where you might be able to you know take a risk with a ones to watch item that you know maybe starts to get sold off after it's announced in team of the week but then actually rises because there was too much sell-off you know stuff like that that's going to make it slightly interesting for, you know, ones to watch stuff and upgrades and, you know, maybe a little bit more hype centralized on that 6 p.m. time frame. Uh, I don't think that'll affect stuff too much, but it's just an interesting note that we won't get early releases on some of that. So looking around some of the screenshots that I saw today, too, I'm going to pull, pull up a lot of screenshots today. Shout out to Mateus Overbeck on Twitter for these. Uh, he was in a lot of streams and just screenshotting a lot of these price ranges. Now, a lot of you guys have seen these cards and be like, yo, these price ranges are set too low on some of these players or they're set really high. Are these ranges going to change? Yes. Early on in the early stages of FIFA, last year this happened. There were price ranges that were updated from night one to night two like this. And of course, EA is very strategic with these because some cards they let be extinct for a while. Then they update the price range. Think about guys last year like Furlan Mendy, like Alan St. Maximin, I think was extinct at one point. And Babu was extinct. There are a lot of players like that. Just be careful with some of those this year. But, you know, some price ranges that we've seen already that are too low for me. This Alejandro Gomez is too low at 50,000 coins, in my opinion. Anthony Martial at 60K is way too low. This is over. This is a 100,000 coin card, in my opinion, uh, to start off the game. And uh, he's way too low. He's way too low right now with this price range, I think. With the United links, with the Bruno Fernandes hype, with French being a very popular nationality as well. I think that this card is going to be upper towards 100K. And at this price range, you know, if you want your Martial, I would get him as fast as you can, either today, first day on the web app, or tomorrow. Uh, so that card's going to go extinct pretty quick, I think. Two cards right here that are, you know, in jeopardy of going extinct. Teo Hernandez at a 10,000 coin price range. If that doesn't get upgraded, he's going to be extinct. And then supposedly Ansu Fati is at a 10K price range as well. If he is on the market, because he is, again, prospected to be in Team of the Week 1, which is dropping today on the very first day of the web app. So just something to keep in mind there. If you want to tear Hernandez, you might try to snag him today or tomorrow uh, first as soon as you can before he gets extinct extinct. And then last one here is Quincy Promes. I honestly think that his 10K max is going to be uh, too low 
for this card, especially with the position change and the links that he does have, a lot of people I've seen, you know, link somebody like Haps at left back to Promes and then to, you know, like maybe a, a weak link in a 4-3-3 to Bergwijn at left mid, then to go Premier League for the rest of the way. And uh, I, I've seen a lot of Promes in starter teams because he looks nasty and he fits the meta. So that's a card that I think at 10K is probably going to be extinct unless he does get a price range update. So that's going to be very interesting right there. Now, headed back to the front page of FIFA, we learned a lot about some of the new cards that were being released today, some of the new objectives and the SBCs as well. I want to talk about the SBCs. I don't know if Footbin has updated this. Uh, they have not. So there are no SBC sets on Footbin yet, but I can confirm with you right now that the advanced SBC set inside of FIFA 21 is the exact same as in years past, I think, like down to all the requirements even, I think. And the packs are tradable, all right? That's the biggest part. Packs are tradable for the hybrid leagues, the hybrid nations. Uh, now, of course, when watching some of those guys that were on the game today do those SBCs, it was very hard for them to do them uh, because there was not a lot of coins and not a lot of cards even on the market. So that's something to think about. Those SBCs are going to start popping up on Footbin. You're going to have the SBC solutions start to show. And then you're going to have stuff like this start to be really, really good research and a really good way to find some cards on the market. Today, when you're looking to snipe and bid and do all that sort of stuff, look through some of these popular nations, right? Portugal, you know, last year was all about the Argentinian left backs. Now, Argentinian left backs again this year might be pretty good, but look in other areas because everybody knows about that. Portuguese left backs, right? There's only four of them that are gold. That's looking pretty good to me. Of course, you want you probably want to focus on the ones that uh, the nation and the league aren't the same, like a Portugal player in Super League, right? That's a off league kind of for that nation. Like all of the German guys are in the Bundesliga, basically. Not all of them, but a predominant amount of them. So the Bundesliga isn't used a ton in the hybrid leagues or hybrid nations because there's just not a lot of different leagues or there's not a lot of different nations inside of that Bundesliga league. So when you're looking at Serie A, it looks pretty good. Uh, La Liga looks pretty good. Even like uh, some of these other nationalities that are kind of sleepers. We looked at Croatia a little bit ago on stream, uh, on the Twitch stream, and Croatia looked okay, but they had some holes. Um, uh, Italy actually is another one that looks pretty solid. I didn't look at Spain. I know Brazil looks good. But Italian left backs is one thing I wanted to point out here. There's only two. Two Italian left backs, Emerson and Crescito. They're going to be expensive because Italy is, again, one of those nations that is going to be used a lot for the SBCs. Of course, you know, you're going to have to use that Crescito card. Obviously, for a center back, if there's a, you're going to have to use a Serie A card. So maybe Italy might not be the best. But for some of these links, Italy is going to be very good. Italian right backs as well. Looks pretty investable for me. Although I think Piscini, they said, moved to the Serie A. So maybe that's not as good as originally thought. But what we're kind of looking for here again is players that are in kind of an off league for that nation. So again, if we look through the French cards, French right backs, there's a ton of them. Um, French, like look at the right wings and right forwards as well. French right wings. I'm interested in Caroma or Caramo and Folkier. These two guys, right? Don't say their names a lot. Just buy their cards. It's Serie A player and a La Liga player amongst a lot of Ligue 1 players because of the French nationality. Those are the types of cards that you would want to pencil in on your list as possibilities for being a little bit more inflated in price. Uh, same thing with the left wings, left mids in the French nationality. Uh, you've got Valbuena, who is from the Hellas Liga, and you've got Nkudu from the Super League, and the rest of the SBC fodder, gold, left mid, left wings that are French are from the League One. So when you have those off leagues and the off nations, you know, you can look through the, the leagues as well. If you have like a, you know, you can look through, let's say, uh, let's go, let's go La Liga. And you can look through some of these different positions, obviously get rid of your nationality filter, look through here and say, okay, well, we've got some, a lot of Spanish guys, of course, we've got a Takashi Inui. He might be decent for SBCs because of some of the links that he might get and a Japanese nationality or Darwin Machis, right? Venezuelan or Cherishev, Russian, right? Look for some of these leagues that have off nation cards or look for some of the nations that have off leagues. And that's kind of the stuff in the research that you can be doing right now inside of foot to look at some of that SPC fodder that'll be useful to trade with 
in the right now kind of time frame. Once again, there were the full database released today, so we kind of figured out there's some more OP cards that are out there. This Tamori card looks sick. He's going to get inserted into a lot of Premier League teams right off the rip because of his card. This dude kind of stole the show today. Huang He Chen. Our, he's, he's Bundesliga, Leipzig links. Of course, you have guys like Conrad Lamer, like Sabitzer, that are kind of hyped up uh, for starter teams that are going to link to him. And of course, we did have three level 30 players released today. A Lacazette with a nice pace boost up to 80 for 85 rated Lacazette and 85 rated Sabitzer and an 85 rated Bernat. So these are the level 30 players that were released today as people were out playing the game. So that was something that was very interesting. And then, of course, some of these other low-rated cards that we learned about. Todibo is a really, really solid-looking French center back in the La Liga and on Bayern, or not Bayern, sorry, Barcelona. Uh, David, of course, is a card that a lot of people were interested in. He, We found out about his card today. Um, some other low-rated cards. Uh, of course, Fatih's card. Yep, we already kind of knew about that one, though. But there's a lot of some of these popular players that were kind of released today that people were able to finish building some starter squads again. And kind of looking up these cards. Dest, of course. Some of the some of these cards. Weston McKinney actually has a pretty solid card for a, a midfielder in the uh, Serie A. Some of the transfers haven't actually taken place yet. So Dest right now in FIFA has an Ajax card. That card's going to become really rare because he just did transfer to Barcelona. So you're going to see that card become really extinct really quickly. Ruben Diaz just transferred to City. He's got his Benfica card still. That's one thing you'll probably see go away. Stuff like that is is pretty common for the first little bit inside a foot. So just kind of watch out for that kind of stuff as well. Last thing. All right. Last thing. Oh, the, the, uh, the web, the web browser didn't change it for a second. Get ready to be spamming the refresh button on this page today. And I'll give you one, one quick tip. All right. When you're going to figure out the web app, right? FIFA 20, one web app. Wow. I can't type web app. Make sure that when you're clicking on the web app, all right, you're clicking this link right here, FIFA, easports.com backslash FIFA backslash ultimate team backslash web app. Because when you go to this page, it actually changes the URL and it says FIFA ultimate team backslash foot app coming soon. So you can't just refresh this page. All right. You need to go back here, click on this link again to refresh it. All right. That's what you need to do, because if you don't, you'll just be refreshing the same coming soon page all day. But again, boys. Today is the big freaking day, baby. EA Sports FIFA 21 Ultimate Team. You can get on your, your squads today with the web app and get things moving, get things rolling. I'm excited. I hope you are too. I'll be streaming the start to my web app later tonight. Link is down in the description if you want to watch me stream live on Twitch. And once again, thank you for all the support on the YouTube videos. You guys are freaking mental. You're smashing it. And I love that you're enjoying the videos. If you're still enjoying them and you enjoyed this one, hit a thumbs up on it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and drop a comment down below if you have any questions. It has been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.